Welcome back to The Mix. I'm ABD. Today we have something exciting. If you didn't see part one, we have a Chipson Explorer. We unboxed it. You can watch it right here. And in this video, we take the guitar, we put it on the bench, and we do some modifications to it. The main things being two new pickups, locking tuners, a new truss rod cover, a new bridge, a new tailpiece, and new knobs. So without further ado, let's get to it so we can do a demo of what the guitar sounds like now. So we have the guitar on our bench and we have a couple of things that we're going to change. We're going to change the knobs because these are cheap and not the right color. They're like a gold, but they're kind of like a light gold. I'm not quite sure why. But the guitar that we're kind of trying to copy, it has uh, metal knobs with like a really pretty kind of ornament on top, but we don't have that. Instead, we have uh, a similar metal knob that has like a pearl kind of top to it. You can see there. And we have three of those we'll put on. These are from uh, Music Lily. And then the other stuff we have is from Geiger. Um, we're gonna replace the tuners because these are not great and we're gonna put locking tuners on there. There's a the wrong type of truss rod cover on there and that's because of the way the truss rod is constructed. It's kind of open there, but we're still gonna try to change that to the correct one that you would usually see on like a Les Paul. Then we're gonna change the bridge and the tailpiece and we're gonna change most importantly, the pickups. Later on, we might change the nut or we might change the output jack to like a metal output jack or a gold one. And we're probably gonna change the strap buttons too eventually. So we can open it up and take a look at the pots and all of that stuff. But first we're gonna change these knobs and the truss rod cover, and then we'll get the strings off and get to the other good stuff. And to get the knobs off, we have this handy tool from Dunlop, the Uniwrench. And uh, that makes it very easy to just pop these off, just rock it back and forth without damaging the finish. And you can also use like two picks um, there's a number of ways to get it off. It's usually not too difficult. And these new ones just pop on. They actually don't have a little Allen wrench on the side. I thought they did. They do not. They just pop on like a normal metric size tone knob. And just like that, we've changed the knobs. And uh, it looks great. It's more in line with the guitar that we're trying to emulate here. And uh, now we're going to change our truss rod cover. We're going to see if we can. This is the wrong type. It's got the three screws. And usually it should have the two screws and it's just kind of low quality. Um, so I'm hoping that we can uh, get a two screw one in there if we use like a long screw to get into uh, the opening for the truss rod cover. So if I would have known they were going to use this type of truss rod cover, I would have asked for them to do the other type of construction. Uh, this screw is stripped. So we detuned it and then we can get these strings off. So I think I'm gonna condition this fretboard as well. It looks really great. It looks like a really nice piece of rosewood, but it does need to uh, be a little conditioned. It is a little dry. One nice thing about the bridge and tailpiece that I'm putting on from Geiger is they have the Allen wrench to lock it on. This bridge right now is on pretty tight, um, but the new one is gonna be able to lock on so it won't fall off when you uh, change strings. And this one had uh, some issues with vibrating before, which these usually do, these cheap ones. It looks pretty good, um, but it's still kind of cheap metal looking. And it was most importantly, it was vibrating because these uh, saddles don't sit perfectly. We're going to take all this out because we're going to replace. We're going to leave the studs in there because that would be kind of a pain in the ass to replace. But we're going to leave these in and then we're going to change everything else. And here we have the new bridge and we can put the uh, posts in. And then our bridge came a little scratched up, but that's OK. I think maybe we'll replace it later. But uh, these Geiger parts come from China too. Then it was probably bounced around in the back of an Amazon truck, but that's okay. We'll uh, put it on for now and worry about it later. And then like I said, once they're on, you can tighten up these little Allen keys on the side to uh, keep them nice and snug. But uh, it was really tight, both of these. They were uh, really tight, kind of hard getting them on. So they're not going anywhere regardless, but just to make it look better, I'm gonna tighten these screws up. So I'm gonna come back to that, but I'm gonna do what we talked about earlier, which is put the uh, correct truss rod cover on here because it will fit, but we're just going to have to drill a new hole. All right, cool. Next we could change the uh, tuning machines because these are not very good and I'm going to change them to locking tuners. And for that we have Geiger locking tuners in gold, which will look better and work better because they are locking. And to get them off, we have a handy dandy Stuart McDonald wrench thing to make it easier to get these off. And so we could do that now. And so those came off nice and easy. Then we can just uh, take these screws, loosen the screws on the back, and we could change it nice and easy. 
So we got those tuners off, the old ones, and here we have the new ones. And thank goodness the screws line up perfectly and they look much better. It always feels good to put locking tuners on a guitar. And so now we can turn it back over. We can put these guys on. So next I'm actually gonna hydrate the fretboard a little bit, and then we can finally turn it over and look at the electronics and change the pickups. And for that, I have Daddario lemon oil, which is conditioner and cleaner, and I have a microfiber cloth. And so I'll just apply it to the cloth and then to the fretboard itself. We could turn the guitar over and we could take a look at the electronics. And like I said in an earlier video, one of the things that lets you know that it's not a true Gibson is that it has a uh, cover. This area that's routed out on the back is too big. On a Gibson, it's a little thinner. It's thinner like that, but on here we have this big plate on the back and uh, it's not flush to the body and it's cheap plastic. And the screws I think are also too big compared to what Gibson would use. So we will uh, open that up and take a look. Okay, the moment of truth. We have, like I thought, mini pots. I kind of tell that they were mini pots when I was playing before, but uh, the routing looks good. You can tell that it's a true mahogany body. And uh, so I'm actually gonna put a piece of tape on the bridge pickup so I know which pickup is which. And then uh, it'll be easy to remove these and put the new ones in. I have my uh, soldering iron warming up. So let's do that. We have metal frames around the pickups. We can loosen those so we can get access to uh, under here and we can see what it looks like. All right, now we can see what it looks like underneath these. That's pretty tight in there. I'm gonna have to probably remove the soldering first. We can look at this one. This one we can look at, you can see the, it's sprayed all in there, but it looks good. The routing looks really nice. And so we have um, McDonald's ketchup and mustard for uh, this one. You can see the really cheap pickup. And um, so I'm gonna turn it over again and unsolder those from the back so I can uh, remove these. Now we can pull the pickups out just like that. And uh, we are pickupless for the moment. Now we have to take the new pickups and put them in the pickup rings. And um, that's always a pain in the butt, but that's what we do next. And you can see that it is a, um, a long neck tendon sort of thing there, but uh, it looks good. The routing looks good. So we're gonna put those in the pickup rings and then we're gonna install the new pickups. And here is a close up of the routing for the pickups and I'll show the back. and it's filled with the infamous packing peanuts that uh, we all love. So I'm gonna eat those later, but um, for now, pour it out over there. We have a little piece of tape there. And what we have inside is very exciting. The MHS-3 bridge with an El Nico 3 pickup, and here's what we have on the other side. Look at that. Clear bobbin on the top, where you could see the actual lines and then a metal bobbin on the bottom. Look at how unique that pickup is. And this is going to go in the bridge of the Explorer. And here's an example of what it looks like with the cover on it. These are made in America, handmade pickups from Planet Tone. Oh, quite shiny. And uh, when you take this off, here's what you get. Okay, so we can open up our pickups from Tone Rider. They are a company based in the UK and they make affordable pickups. We have a knife, we have a box, and we can open it up.
we have some of that kind of recycled paper in here that they use in the UK. And if we unravel this mess, here's what we have inside. Two Tone Rider pickups. So now we can put them back in here and we have to fish the uh, wiring through. And, uh, and now that I have the ring on the bridge pickup, it looks like a Firebird pickup. So first I'll put in the neck pickup because it'll fish through into the bridge position. Then I'm going to screw this in and then I'm going to fish this through the back and then I'm going to put the bridge pickup in. All right, the pickups are in. And now we just have to solder them in on the back and uh, put a new pair of strings on here. And then we can plug it in and see how it sounds after we give it a nice uh, setup. Sweet, the pickups are in. We could take this off. Ooh, we could polish that a little bit. And then uh, now we can restring it with a fresh pair of strings. And uh, then we could finally hear what it sounds like. We've got our strings on, everything's all good. Let's go plug it in and see how it sounds. And we are back. The guitar is done. What do you think? I think it came out pretty darn good. In the neck position, we have a Tone Rider pickup, which is an Al Nico 4. In the bridge, we have a Planet Tone pickup, which is an Al Nico 3. Usually you'll see Al Nico 5 pickups. The second most common is probably Al Nico 2, but Al Nico 4 and 3 are a little less common. An Al Nico 3 magnet, for example, is the type of magnet that you'll see in a Gibson custom bucker. So you have probably heard it before. It's not that uncommon of a pickup to see in like a Les Paul type guitar. But Al Nico 5 is definitely more common, and Al Nico 4 is pretty rare. You don't see that very often. There's also Al Nico 8 and you very rarely see that. And then of course there's also ceramic pickups, but in this case we have El Nico 3 and El Nico 4. Uncovered and covered with no holes, kind of like a Firebird pickup, especially with the metal pickup ring that we have here. The bridge and the tailpiece are from Geiger, Goiker. They have the Allen key adjustment here to lock them in place so they won't move. And uh, you saw the electronics on the back, they are mini pots, because when I ordered the guitar, I could have told them, hey, could you put large pots in there full size? But I didn't, I kind of forgot. And to be honest, it really comes down to the quality of the pots more than the size of the pots. And uh, these are good quality pots. The taper is good and they sound good. I really don't feel the need to replace them with full size pots, but obviously I could do that in the future if I wanted to. So let's plug this in and hear what it sounds like. We have a Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister 20 tube amp into a V30 speaker and some pedals on the floor. We have a reverb pedal in the post and we can hear what it sounds like through a tube amp. So actually first we can hear it acoustically. If you didn't see the part one video, and especially after a new setup with a new bridge, here's what you get. And so now for the neck pickup with no pedals on on the clean channel of the amp. Now for the bridge. So go back to the neck and we'll try a compressor. And here's what you get. Bridge. Go back to the neck and lower the volume to a little less than half. Back to the neck if we lower the tone. So like I said, uh, they're good quality pots. I really don't feel like I need to change them, but I can if I need to in the future. Cool, let's try the uh, higher gain channel. No pedals on the neck. Back to the bridge. Sounds pretty spectacular if you ask me. 
Another thing that we talked about in part one, if you missed that, we could talk about it here very quickly. The frets that we put on here are the ball end type, where the sides are rounded, like you see on some modern guitars like Ert and things like that, and they are stainless steel. They feel fantastic. I have a few different chips and guitars, and this by far is the best feeling fretboard, the best looking fretboard. The frets are polished beautifully. They feel like silk and beautiful. Everything is even. I do have one issue where if I bend the high E this way, it can get stuck. Um, there's a little lip of uh, on like the 14th or 16th fret, something like that, where the string gets stuck in there between the fret and the binding. And that's something that will happen on Gibsons too, because they have their fret nibs. And uh, especially like some from the 80s and like 90s, and even some recent Gibsons will have the uh, fret nib kind of come away from the fret and then it'll get stuck in there. And so you can alleviate that by just bending the other way, which when you're bending the high E, you should be bending up anyways, not that way. And um, I could probably fix it by putting some glue or, or filler in there as well. I just have to find which fret or frets it is. Um, that's one of the only negatives. But besides that, the fretboard feels and looks unbelievable. Obviously, if you look at it, um, and you're like, is that a real Gibson? You'll know it's not a real Gibson by looking at it for like two seconds because it has a big volute on the back. The headstock is not the right shape. This horn up here is uh, a little too tall and sharp. On an actual Explorer, it's a little more rounded and a little shorter. And you know what? I kind of like this better. After seeing an actual Explorer after this, it kind of feels a little nubby. And so we actually have an Epiphone Explorer here that we can compare to this, and it's uh, a Carina. Explorer with Epiphone pickups, and you can kind of see the difference in shape. Let me grab that real quick. So if you can see, I don't know how easy it'll be to see, but this horn here is a little taller and a little sharper than it should be on an actual uh, Epiphone or Gibson. And then the thickness of the gold one, the Chipson, is a little thicker, very, very slightly thicker than the Epiphone or Gibson variant. It should be 1.5 inches, but this is about 1.6 maybe 1.7, but you can barely tell by looking. But if you look this way at the shape, you can more easily tell that the horn is a different shape. Down here, this horn is slightly differently shaped as well. If you look, really not that much of a difference. Obviously, this is Carina, and this is Mahogany, and the Carina one is much lighter. This one is like 7.6 pounds, and this one is exactly 8 pounds. And I like, actually, the heavier one, it feels better. The neck also, I think, feels better on the Chipson. It's more of like a C-shaped neck. And uh, the Epiphone neck, god dang, man, it's like this really flat back. I don't even know what I'd call it. It's kind of like a D. They call it a D-shaped neck, but I don't know if I would really call it that. It's very flat on the back, and it has very big shoulders, and I don't like it. Um, I definitely like the Chipson a lot better than I like the Epiphone here. The pickups don't sound that great either. You've heard this one. Now you can hear this one very briefly, just so you can hear that Epiphone pickups don't sound that good. And so again, this one has a Carina body and a Carina neck, a Laurel fretboard that has different pickups that are El Nico 5, and it has uh, nickel frets, which could very minutely change the tone. So if we go to the neck pickup, here's what you get. <laughs> We have the bridge. And so that's on the high gain channel of the amp. And uh, they're not terrible sounding pickups. They have, they do kind of try to mimic how a Gibson pickup sounds, which has a lot of hair on it. They're very gritty sounding pickups, but they're very muddy. They do have kind of a lot of bass. But it's not low-end bass. It's kind of this mid-low bass that kind of feels a little muddy. And there's just really a lack of high-end sparkle on these pickups, or spank, that uh, you get in spades from these, especially the El Nico 3. It's this really kind of spanky, almost honky sound that really, with a little bit of distortion and bending, sounds really great. Here, again, they don't sound bad, but they're a little muddy and they definitely lack a little bit of character, and they're almost like, you know, a little too hairy. There's too much grit going on. If we go to, like, the bridge, though, and we lower the volume, we can lose a lot of that grit, clean it up a lot. So 
that was a quick comparison of what this guitar sounds like. Now we can go back to the Chipson. So it just really feels all around better. Even though both of these guitars were made in China, one of them is officially licensed by Gibson. This one feels a lot better and costs less than half. So we've gotten some pretty great tones from the tube amp. One more thing we could do is plug it in DI into an interface and we can hear how it sounds with some simulated amp plugins. And so that's it. I think that we've done everything that we can. You saw it on the bench. We changed the pickups, the truss rod cover, the tuning machines. We oiled the fretboard. We put new pickups in with a new cover down here, an Alnico 4 and an Alnico 3. We put a new bridge, a locking bridge and tailpiece. We put new knobs on here. We didn't change the pots. We didn't change the nut because they really don't need to be changed. Um, how do you think it sounds? I think it sounds spectacular. It feels spectacular to play. Two, it's a 12 inch radius and uh, the neck is very thin. We do have a contour gauge and if we wanted to see the shape of the neck, we could pretty easily do that if we go up here to the first fret. Here's what that looks like. Pretty simple, C-shaped neck, very small neck up there. And if we go down to the 12th fret, we definitely get something a little different. But again, another C-shaped neck, um, again, pretty thin, not the widest neck. So thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it, especially if you watched the full thing. It was a longer video, I know that. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please do remember to like and subscribe. That would make me very happy and help the channel out quite a bit. And until next time, rock out, play Explorers in Gibsons and Chipsons, and thank you for being awesome. Very, very, uh, and so again, this...